Hello and welcome to the Black Hat Bushcraft Channel. I'm Matt. Today I wanted to give you a quick look at the late fall phase of the tulip poplar tree. Tulip poplar is probably one of the most useful trees for us when we're out in the woods as it provides us with many different resources uh, from making a tender bundle or bird's nest from the inner bark. Uh, the inner bark can also be used to improvise cordage. Uh, the wood, when dry, makes uh, for excellent bow drill sets for making friction fire. Uh, you can carve the dry wood into utensils, feather sticks, so forth. And, of course, you can use it for green woodworking as well. Uh, so the tulip poplar tree really does provide us with a lot of different resources. And so I wanted to give you a better look if you're not familiar with how to identify the tree when the leaves are already fallen. So stick with me and we'll take a look at several examples. All right, this is my first example. And this tree, as you'll see, is actually branched out into two trunks. And it's a very tall tree. Mature tulip poplar trees tend to be very, very tall. They'll be one of the tallest trees in the eastern woodlands as they'll rise up above the canopy of the forest in uh, attempt to get sunlight, of course, so that way it can achieve its photosynthesis. Um, one of the things you'll notice about a tulip poplar as you look up the the trunk of the tree is the limbs tend to be concentrated up high as it sheds all the lower limbs that are receiving less sunlight and that way it can focus its energy up top. Um, of course as you look around down below a tulip poplar tree on the ground you'll often find lots of sheds and pretty much with the exception of these big logs here all of this little stuff you see are sheds off this tree and the interesting thing about those sheds is every piece of it is covered with the dry inner bark. Let's see if I can find a better example. This one's better. And you can see it's got this stringy appearance to it. Hopefully this will show up on camera. But when you peel that bark back, you get long fibrous strands. And I've got other videos on this channel to talk about tulip poplar bark, so if you're not familiar with that, you can definitely look that up. I've got a couple of videos that demonstrate how to use it and and what it looks like and so forth. But that's where you can find it, and that's a great resource is to find these sheds down below the tree where it shed its limbs, and just scrape these down, and you can get that inner bark for fire tender or for cordage. Here's another tulip popper in this same general area. And you see, I think in a previous date, I actually collected up some sticks here that I was using. But this is another fort tree. This one's a really good example of the bark of a tulip poplar tree. It's often referred to as looking like elephant skin. And it really does kind of have that kind of appearance to it. it. It looks different from any of the other trees. I'd say the closest thing, or did I see around here bark-wise, would be like a maple tree. But they're very distinct differences between them. As you look up the tree, you'll notice that there's these little uh, scars. And that's where limbs have shed. And you'll see those all the way up the tree, uh, those little scars. And I'm not sure how well they'll show up on camera. But you'll see these little places where the limbs have shed. And that's also something else that I kind of look out for. Now, there are aspen trees, and aspen trees will have more of a chevron-shaped scar, whereas the tulip poplars are just more kind of an arch shape to it. However, to some degree, the aspen bark can be used very much like a tulip poplar. And there are some leaves way up high in this tree. But at this distance, they're hard to make out, really, with, with just your eye. This is a really interesting example of a tulip poplar tree. I don't see many that look quite like this. But you can see, maybe the original trunk got damaged in some way. I'm just guessing on that and it sprung out into three separate trunks and these are mature. A few of these left at the top. You can see those shed marks. I'm not sure you're on the back side of the sun so you may not be able to see them. Give you a good look at the bark once again. That's definitely an interesting one there. It's like a reverse tripod. Um, I mentioned maple tree so sometimes people may confuse those. Um, but with a maple tree, you're going to have segments that are furrowed like this. And then you'll get to a spot like that that's very smooth. You'll also notice a difference in the shape. The maple is kind of grows crooked. It has crooks in it like that. So it has bends where it's kind of shaped asymmetrical. 
Whereas the tulip poplar trunk is normally very straight and vertical. So they grow straight up basically. Just thought that would be an interesting example right there. The tripod tree. Here's a much younger version of a tulip poplar tree. And the bark has a similar look, but it's not quite as furrowed. It's a little more smooth, the tree. And this one is only, I mean, you can see it's not, not very wide at all. I can almost wrap my hand around it. However, it goes way up. But this tree is probably only a couple of years old because I believe, if I remember correctly, a tulip poplar tree can grow as much as 12 feet in one year. So it's a very fast growing tree. And that's another look at a different, different age tree. So you can see the bark. And even with this tree, you can see those little scars where it's dropped its limbs. There's one there. And all the way up, this tree is probably 30 foot tall. Maybe not quite. But very few limbs down low, and they're concentrated up high. This is a tulip poplar that's mature, that fell quite some time ago. It's just starting to rot. That gives you a close-up on the bark. That bark hasn't deteriorated too much yet. That's a good look at it. And tulip poplar is a very soft wood, so you'll find a lot of times when we have storms and things like that that the tops will break out of those trees. Here's one more example of the deadfall, and this has really got that antler look to it. Hopefully that shows up on the camera because the sunlight. As you can see that fibrous bark. It'll catch your eye. And some of these uh, smaller limbs like this, you can use the spine of your knife and scrape it down, and it'll really, it'll really take that bark off. As you can see how stringy that is, it comes off nice. All right, here's one last look at a smaller tulip poplar tree, give you a close in of the bark. You can see there's a leaf right there that hasn't fallen off yet. Just in case you're not familiar with the leaves, and I'll find a better example to show you in a moment. This tree still has some leaves. They're close to falling. I'm not sure how well you can see the shape of those leaves. So I'll find one on the forest floor and show you that. All right, this is a good example of a tulip poplar leaf. And obviously this one has been shed and just hasn't deteriorated yet on the forest floor. A lot of people will recognize the leaf shape as a lady's shirt. Some people will see it and think of it as a cat's face. But either way, that is a good example of what you'll see on the tulip poplar tree. All right, well, I appreciate you guys taking the time to tune in for this quick look at the fall phase of a tulip poplar tree. And hopefully this will give you several things that you can consider when you're identifying these trees. Uh, number one, keep in mind the tree shape that you're going to have this long trunk and the limbs are going to be concentrated near the top. So you're going to see a lot of space with no limbs and then up at the top of the limbs. When you scan around in the forest, a lot of times those types of trees will stick out to you um, versus the trees that have more lower limbs. Um, so you're going to notice that when you look at the tree, you'll notice those little scar marks that I showed you where the sheds have come off, uh, where it's dropped its lower limbs. And then when you look at the bark and you see that gray bark um, and it kind of looks like elephant skin, that'll be another good telltale sign. Um, in the fall, when the leaves have fallen, you, you don't obviously don't have the leaves to look at, but if you're looking at the forest floor and you're paying attention down to the forest floor as you're walking and you start to see lots of these leaves, then you're going to know that you have a tulip poplar tree or multiple tulip poplar trees in your immediate area. So then you can start to scan things a lot more closely. You'll also start to see those sheds around. So maybe you're walking and you spot something that looks kind of like a dry deer antler and then you see that fibrous bark peeling off. There's going to be lots of sheds normally around a tulip poplar tree. So that gives you several things that you can look for and it'll help you uh, definitely identify the tulip poplar and also be able to find and utilize the resource that that tree offers for you. All right, I appreciate you guys always tuning in to the channel. I appreciate your interest, your support, your comments. Uh, and I hope to be talking to you with another video again very soon. Until that time, God bless you and yours, and take care.